So today is finally the day that they have started cutting the maize. So while they're out cutting the maize, I thought I'd just explain why we actually sow maize. So the first reason that we sow maize is that here on the main farm, we don't sow any cereal. We only sow maize and grass, so we do silage. So after the maize is cut, we will be sowing um, whole crop silage and permanent grass seed. So our whole crop contains two different types of peas, um, Italian ryegrass, wheat and furgo, which is like a high protein bean. So we get really good um, return per hectare on that. And we're also going to be cutting down on cereal this year because, well, for two reasons, because we will be, uh, we are increasing the amount of cattle that we have on the farm. So we're going from 180 calving cows to 220 in the next year. And as it is very hard to get labor, we will be cutting down on the amount of work as well. So we found over the past two years because of the drought that hay has actually been less work and making a higher return compared to the cereal. So that's another reason why, as well as the cows, um, we are going to stop or cut down on cereal. So the more cows you have, more size we need, and then we're also going to need maize. And then the second reason is how we actually use it on our cows. So I'm just going to go back out here now and film the rest of what these guys are doing and then I will explain to you the second reason, how we use it on our wanelings, what we use it for and when. So they have brought in a few trailers already. Dad is just rolling it so it's nice and compact for when we put the next trailer on. Just stay out of his way because he can't see me. a big thing is neighbour help neighbour so we'll help them out with their maze and then they come help us out with our maze so we don't need to get contractors or have a lot of drivers and then a big part of it is also to have a small gathering in the evening or in the middle of the day depending on what time and to all have a meal together to thank everyone who helped us so that's what me and mum are going to be doing today as well as our daily jobs and whatever jobs that dad has
So as um, we have been getting a lot of drought weather as well, the maize hasn't been grown as good. So I have said this and showed it out in the field. Um, yeah, we just have no water. The past three to four years have just been hit with really bad drought. The maize isn't growing as well. The second field that we are cutting does look a lot better. So we're waiting to see how that turns out. Um, they're two different types, so I think if we go with that type next year, maybe. Another reason we might stop is because um, it's just hard to get labour. So when we're cutting maize, we do need quite a lot of people to draw it in. Um, so for example, we have two neighbours, so Dad had to go help them when they were cutting their maize. And then we have another, which is a man from Wexford who was farming about 40 minutes away who came to help us. And an Irish retired man up, um, he's only a few minutes away, he does come and help out. But for example, he never drove a tractor before, so that was his first time driving a tractor. He did very good, but like that, yeah, um, it's just getting harder and harder to find labour, especially with this coronavirus, we can't have people from Ireland coming over. Um, we have our own combine, so we have our own main combine harvester, but because Dad had to drive and roll on the pit, um, he couldn't drive the harvester, so we didn't have a harvester, which meant that we had to get a contractor in with his harvester to cut the maize. Um, so yeah, all in all, the labour of the maize is still something that we have to look at, and the fact that it's not grown as well. It is a little bit drier, so it should take maybe longer to ferment um, when we put the plastic on. But all in all, the maize is really handy to have, so it just depends on kind of what we decide after this year. now for another year. Dad is just there finishing rolling off the pit. It looks like it's about to rain so the pressure is on to get the plastic covered on it quick. But all in all, I'm uh, quite happy. Thought we got more this year than I was expecting, especially having sown less and it being a bad drought. So the second reason that we use maize is of course for the wanelings. So we do autumn and spring calving and we use the maize to fatten up wanelings. So we find that autumn calving is the best, the best return over here, because um, the cows and calves go into the shed in, so they're born in September, the cows and calves go into the shed in November, December, and they stay in there with the cows, so we have better control over them. We start feeding them cereal, and then we move them on to cereal and, and maize silage, compared to out in the fields where we don't have as much control because they go in and out and eat whenever they want. Um, we do find that when the calves are out in the fields, they don't grow as evenly as they do in the shed. Because when they're in the fields and they're getting fed in the creep feeders, like I showed you on the last video with the Emily bucket, um, it's the bigger ones that will go in and eat first, and then the smaller ones will go in and eat last, so there's less. Whereas when they're in the shed and they are fed um, constantly or they get good access to feed, they, they thrive a lot more in the shed. So then come March, we take the calves off the cows. So then the wanelings are fed ad lib, uh, maize and cereal as well with a bit of hay and straw. This year out of 
89 um, whalings that we've had, 18 of them we left on the mothers out in the field. Um, so we didn't separate them in March. We separated them just before leaving and yeah, they were about 70 or 80 kilos lighter than the ones that were in the shed. So there is really a big difference in terms of weight, which is what we are aiming to get. Also with spring calving is that out in the fields, they only really get two, two maybe three months to, to grow and to thrive because then we really hit into the hard summer drought weather. Um, you can't feed maize into the creep feeders because it just goes off so fast. There's barely any grass. Um, and then we just have to feed hay out into the fields as well. So the mothers aren't producing as good as milk. And then the heat causes a lot of stress on them. They have a lot of flies, which hurts around their eyes as well. The other reason we wean the calves um, in autumn a little bit earlier than we would with the calves, spring calves is that the mothers don't hold their milk as long in the winter time. The other reason we like autumn calves is that the price of sale in springtime is also a lot better than the autumn sale for spring calves. So that is the plan for next year. We will be doing hopefully more hay, less cereal, feeding more cows. We will definitely have more calves. Um, in the next videos, you will see us getting our future heifers ready and how we are weaning our current springborn calves. So now that our other weanlings have gone to Italy, we will now be fattening these new weanlings in the shed as well. Um, so yeah, you guys will get to see that. So now we just have to put the plastic on the pit to let it ferment for the next few days and put tires on the top to hold on the plastic and add weight. And then yeah, good to go. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Next week's video is all about weaning our calves and we will be getting our heifers ready to be put with the bull for next year's calving. So hit the notification button so you don't miss out.